Valentine's Day is a romantic holiday, but its beginnings are far, far from the world of chocolates, teddy bears, and flowers. Valentine's Day is observed annually on February 14th. Couples frequently exchange gifts and cards, go out to dinner, or simply spend quality time together. St. Valentine was a Roman priest and physician who was reportedly murdered in 270 AD for assisting Christian couples in getting married. It is usually believed that the Christian emperor, Claudius II Gothicus, outlawed marriage because he considered it harmful for soldiers, hence the martyr was executed on February 14th for secretly marrying people. This is not the only Valentine's Day tragedy that occurred. Here, we examine some of the other infamous and terrible murders that occurred on Valentine's Day, the day when people are supposed to express their love for one another. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at a Valentine's Massacre, the horrific court stories. Yeah, you heard it right. Oscar Pistorius shoots girlfriend in their home. In February 2013, a former South African sprinter, Oscar Pistorius, was convicted of murdering his model girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. The former Olympic athlete, whose both feet were severed when he was 11 months old and earned him the nickname Blade Runner, shot his lover four times. He first denied murder, stating that he mistook her for an intruder at his house in Pretoria, South Africa, because they were both madly in love. In 2014, the crippled athlete was convicted guilty of culpable homicide, a similar charge to manslaughter following one of the most high-profile trials in recent history. His initial five-year sentence was overturned, and he's currently halfway through his current term of 13 years and five months. He may shortly be granted parole, which could result in his immediate release. On the 10th anniversary of their daughter's death, Barry and June Steenkamp stated that they had forgiven Pistorius. They told Mail Online that they're adamantly opposed to his early release since he refused to confess that he shot his partner on purpose. Dr. Death Killed His Wife Mild-mannered and dependable Dr. John Hamilton was renowned for his romantic nature and devotion to his wife Susan. They had been married for 14 years and frequently gave her extravagant gifts, including a Porsche on their wedding day and luxury vacations. Dr. Hamilton was a skilled obstetrician, gynecologist in Oklahoma City, and on Valentine's Day in 2001, he left his home early for surgery so he could exchange Valentine's Day cards with his wife. Unfortunately, Valentine's Day became a horrific nightmare. The 53-year-old physician strangled and beat his wife to death before leaving her in a pool of blood in the bathroom. Then, he dialed 911 and sobbed, Please dispatch police, kindly dispatch an ambulance, I believe my wife is deceased. Susan had been strangled with two neckties and her head had been bashed with such force that a portion of her brain was exposed when the paramedics arrived. Police initially didn't find a murder weapon, but the pair's Valentine's cards gave away that their relationship wasn't what it had seemed. Susan had written, I bought this two weeks ago, so I guess maybe it doesn't seem as appropriate, but I do adore you. Have a good day, Susan. Later, it was revealed that John was having an affair and Susan began to explore a divorce. The jury convicted Dr. Hamilton guilty of first-degree murder. He was then sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. He continues to challenge his conviction, but a new trial has thus far been rejected. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre the St. Valentine's Day Massacre is one of the most brutal acts of violence ever to occur on this day. Seven members of the Chicago Northside Gang were murdered on February 14, 1929. The males were standing in a garage at Lincoln Park, Chicago. Four unknown assailants, two of whom were disguised as police officers, lined them up against a wall and opened fire. Although the crime remains unsolved, it is largely believed that Al Capone, leader of the rival Southside Italian Gang, ordered the massacre. In the 1920s, gang warfare was rampant, and Al Capone often attempted to eliminate his rivals in the illegal trades of bootlegging, gambling, and prostitution. Christian missionary killed his wife. Nathan Luthold, 39, and his wife Denise were on a mission trip to Eastern Europe when he allegedly fell in love with a Lithuanian student, 21 years old. They met. According to the prosecution, Denise and Nathan supported girls' education in the United States. Back in Paroya, Illinois, he was thought to have murdered his wife on Valentine's Day in 2013 so that they could be together. The police were called to the site at approximately 3.40 p.m. when they discovered a 39-year-old's lifeless body immediately inside the door. She had been slain by a single gunshot wound to the head. Authorities argued that Leuthold faked a break-in at his in-law's residence in order to cover his tracks. The police discovered that he had Google how to silence a weapon and knock someone unconscious. He was found guilty of first-degree murder and given an 80-year jail sentence. 
woman hired Mr. Results hitman to kill her husband. Stacy Shook, the 38-year-old administrator for a medical practice in DeKalb, Georgia, was believed to be having an affair with a guy she met at work. She had second thoughts about marrying her 46-year-old husband, Richard, who had adopted two of her children. Stacy told her husband that she wanted to exchange Valentine's Day cards in a park in Snellville, a city east of Atlanta, on February 14, 2010, but that was the last thing on her mind. She is thought to have paid personal trainer Reginald Coleman, popularly known as Mr. Results, $10,000 to assassinate her husband, who worked as a university facilities manager. Richard, the sixth pass of Stacy, was fatally shot five times, including twice directly to the face. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so that you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video.